Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're out here taking a look at the all-new for 2014 Toyota Highlander. The big news for the 2014 model year is that this Highlander is now available in an 8-seat passenger version, which means that this competes very directly with the likes of the Honda Pilot, as well as GM's Lando triplets, which includes things like the Chevy Traverse, as well as the GMC Acadia. The Highlander also competes with the likes of the Ford Explorer as well as the Nissan Pathfinder, but because this is a prototype vehicle and we're at a launch event, we won't have too much time to compare it with the direct competition, so be sure and check back on this channel in February when we get our hands on one for a complete week and we'll fill in all the details at that point. 2014 brings us a much bolder front end. I'm not sure if I like this grille that much. It is definitely larger and more aggressive than last year's model, and these headlamps are also quite dramatic compared to the outgoing Toyota Highlander. Down here, you'll find standard fog lamps as well as daytime running lamps that are LEDs in higher level trims. These headlamps are an interesting look. They stick out quite far from the body. It's something that a lot of Japanese companies have been doing lately. I'm not entirely clear whether I like the style or not, but we're told that part of the reason for this is all in aerodynamics and reducing the wind noise in the Toyota Highlander, something that is definitely improved for this 2014 model year. This look is also mimicked on the back of the Highlander, so let's go around there now. You can really see from this angle how dramatically these rear tail lamps stick out from the back side of the vehicle. Again, I'm not really sure how much I like that, but do let me know what you think in the comment section down below. The rear end of the 2014 Highlander is notably more exciting than the last Highlander. That was something that apparently a lot of Highlander owners complained about, was that the car was just a little bit too boxy, a little bit too boring, and didn't really fit in with the rest of the more dramatic crossover crowd, and Toyota's really fixed that with this generation. Depending on which model you get, you can get a rear separate opening glass. The base models of the Highlander do not get this glass that opens separately from the tailgate, but the XLE and the Limited models do get it, and it is very handy. We also have a power opening rear tailgate, which is also a very handy feature in this segment. And one thing that I kind of like, but you know, people may vary, opinions may vary on this feature, is that they put the power tailgate button right here on the tailgate itself, rather than on the side. Down here, the exhaust tips are hidden on every Highlander model, so rather than having a very dramatic rear end with dual exhaust tips, we only have one exhaust tip and it's hidden right down there on the right side of the vehicle. The biggest change for 2014 and the Highlander is this side profile view, and that's because things are an awful lot more dramatic and more exciting than they were last year. I'm seeing an awful lot of Jeep Grand Cherokee in this design, which is a very good thing. We have this sort of sloping rear profile here, and it's actually more of an optical illusion than an actual sloping rear profile, because the roof height is fairly constant as we go rearward in the Highlander. It just gives this appearance of a more coupe-like profile, which is quite attractive. The windows also get a little smaller as we go towards the rear. We still have fairly slab sides and a fairly mainstream character line as we go across the vehicle. The other thing that you're going to notice about the Highlander for 2014 is how long this is. It's become three inches longer than the last generation Highlander. Although this isn't as long as something like a Chevy Traverse, it is still a decent amount larger than it was last year, and larger than something like a Kia or a Hyundai competitor to the Highlander. The chassis lengthening is all because of the rear seat passengers, because we now get a third row that seats three in the Highlander. So that means this is an eight passenger vehicle, two up front, three in the middle, and three in the back. As we've come to expect with modern cars, when we look down here at the wheels, they've gotten bigger for 2014. They're an inch larger all the way across the model lineup. Toyota's also done something a little bit interesting with the high-end trims of the Highlander. If you opt for the Chrome Tech package, it's not really a chromed alloy wheel like you might assume. It's actually an alloy wheel like this one. This is a regular old alloy wheel here. But then they put on top of this alloy wheel a plastic chromed um, cover, I guess you'd call it. Sort of like a hubcap, only it's not removable, so it's permanently bonded to the alloy wheel. I'm not sure how well those will last. I really want to see what those look like after they've been curbed a few times. Um, I think it's a little bit of a disappointment that Toyota doesn't allow you to replace that chrome cover. I think it would be a great selling point if you did curb your wheel and you could replace that chrome tech cover. It would make repairs an awful lot less expensive. Not too much has changed under the hood for the Highlander, which means you still won't find any boosted four-cylinder engines under here. Things start out with the base 2.7 liter four-cylinder engine. It's basically the same engine you'll find in the Toyota Camry. 185 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque. That's mated to a six-speed automatic transmission and power is sent only to the front wheels. There's no all-wheel drive option available with that four-cylinder engine. Toyota tells us that only about 5% of customers will be choosing that four-cylinder engine, so most people will have this 3.5-liter V6 that we have right here. It produces 270 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque, and new for this year, it is now mated to the same six-speed automatic as the four-cylinder got, which is an improvement over last year. 
Like last year, you can opt for the top-end model with the 3.5-liter-based hybrid system. It produces 280 horsepower and about 280 pound-feet of torque, although Toyota doesn't really say for sure. The heart of that system is both the traditional hybrid power split device under the hood right here with two motor generator units and a third motor generator unit in the back powering the rear axle, which is good for about 75 horsepower. That's somewhat similar to the Acura RLX system where there is no mechanical connection between the front wheels and the rear wheels. So under full throttle acceleration, the most power you can ever send to the rear in a Toyota Highlander hybrid is about 75 horsepower or so. That's quite a bit different than the 3.5 liter V6 gasoline only version of the Highlander, which can lock the center coupling and send 50% of the power and torque to the rear axle. Thanks to the new six-speed automatic transmission on the 3.5 liter gasoline engine, fuel economy has improved over last year by about one mile per gallon across the board, whether you have the all-wheel drive version or the front-wheel drive version. Before we hop inside, let's talk pricing. The base Highlander with the 2.7 liter engine will cost you $29,215 and the most expensive Highlander available is going to be a fully loaded hybrid, and it will set you back $49,470. The majority of Highlanders sold, we're told about 80%, will be the XLE or the limited trim, which range between $36,000 for the cheapest XLE and about $42,000 for a limited with most of the options. Although we're in the XLE model right now, Toyota tells us that the one step up limited model is actually going to be the volume seller for the Highlander. They expect about 40% of the models to be that Highlander Limited. One thing to keep in mind is that the eight passenger seating package is only available in the Highlander XLE and below. It's actually the standard package and then you opt from there into the seven seater package in the XLE and below. And then Limited, Hybrid and above, etc. Those all have the seven passenger seating as standard. For the driver, we have a standard tilt telescoping steering wheel with a decent range of motion. And the steering wheel is a little bit more attractive than some of the other Toyota steering wheels that we've seen in the past. We still have faux injection molding going on right here on the airbag cover, but there are no harsh points like you'd find in the Toyota RAV4. We do have a leather steering wheel in most of the models as well. Over here to the left of the driver, we have a button bank that kind of reminds you that you didn't choose all the options available on the Highlander because there are a lot of blank buttons there in our XLE model. The driver's seat is very comfortable for this category. It also is quite adjustable. We have a uh, bottom seat extending feature right here in the XLE and the limited and hybrid models. We also have a two-way lumbar support. The power passenger seat is standard on the XLE and the limited model as well, but it doesn't have the same range of motion as this driver's seat. Second row comfort in the Highlander is very good for this segment as well. The seat bottom cushions aren't as close to the floor as some entries in the mid-sized crossover segment, meaning that it's more comfortable for an adult or an adolescent to sit in this seat in relative comfort. We have manual forward and backward adjustment on the seat as well as a reclining seat mechanism. This is the most reclined position as you can see right there. And that's in both the seven passenger and the eight passenger versions of the Highlander. If I move over to the middle seat, we get a little bit of a headroom loss back here, um, but I still have about an inch and a half of headroom left. The model of Highlander that we're in right now has the rear seat entertainment system, which is this pop-down screen from the roof, and we also have the smaller sunroof option. There is a panoramic sunroof option available in the Highlander, but it does severely cut down the rear headroom, especially in that third row back there. If I move over to the far right side, you can see I do have a decent amount of legroom left between this second row seat and this front seat, which was adjusted for a six foot five passenger that we had in the car earlier. Uh, the important thing about that is that I can really move up this middle seat quite a bit in order to give that third row seat some room. So let's check this out. Right now I have uh, about uh, three inches of legroom left behind this seat right here. I might even recline it just a touch right there. Now let's hop in the third row and see how that third row is. Entering the third row is fairly easy. We do have a little lever right there, which allows you to push that seat forward. Although Toyota does not advertise this as such, I suspect that you could probably keep a smaller child seat in this second row seat while it was collapsed forward. There's also a, another way of doing this, and that's with this handle right here. You can uh, lean that seat almost all the way forward like that. You can also use this other handle right here on the bottom of the seat to fold that seat forward and then scoot it all the way forward if you so desire. This seat does not, however, fold and tumble like certain designs. So you can't fold this seat and then tumble it into position up there and give yourself a little bit more room. Either way, it's fairly easy to get into the back seat, which is somewhat cramped, if I'm honest. This is not the largest back seat available in this class. You can tell just by looking at the position of my legs as well as the seats back here, this is definitely a mother-in-law or small child third row. My head's also touching the ceiling. If I move all the way over to the right, push that headrest up, 
and try and sit back in this third row seat. The headrest, as you can see, is kind of hitting me at the top of the back rather than on the head, and my hair is brushing the ceiling. If I move this front seat up to its most upright position right there, we get a little bit more leg room. And if I move the seats all through the car to be suitable for a six foot passenger, that would be the front seat, the middle row, as well as this back row, then you get a little bit more room. You can also recline this third row back a decent amount. The recline is actually fairly severe in this third row, but if you do that, then your head is a little bit close to the glass, which makes me just a tiny bit uncomfortable. However, I could probably do this for, you know, an hour or so or off to lunch if I needed to. This third row middle seat isn't quite as high off the ground as this second row middle seat, although my hair is still touching the ceiling. An interesting feature available on the 2014 Highlander is called Driver Easy Talk, and you can kind of think about it as an in-car intercom. There's a microphone up front that's used for the Bluetooth system as well as the voice recognition system, and if Driver Easy Talk is enabled, the car will use that as sort of a one-way intercom, so that way the passengers in this third row can more easily hear the driver without the driver having to really speak up or yell throughout the cabin, but it doesn't allow the rear passengers to talk to the front passenger in that same assisted way, so the rear passengers still have to talk up a little bit. Let's take a quick walk around the interior. As you can see, the driver and the front passenger have height adjustable seat belts, two-way adjustable headrests there. These are anti-whiplash seats. They've gotten a little bit thinner for this year, as you can see. That's to help improve legroom for the rear passengers. Since we're in the XLE model, we get standard leather seats, and in the limited model, we get standard perforated cooled leather seats as well. Over on the doors and dashboard, Toyota has made extensive use of soft touch plastics, which really bring up the Highlanders game in this competitive segment. Over here we have a soft touch injection molded dashboard, soft touch plastics in this little shelf right here, and then hard plastics lower in the dashboard. Let's take a closer look at that shelf. As you can see, it runs all the way from the passenger side all the way along to the front of the Highlander. It allows you to put cell phones, keys, and other widgets right there in this fairly deep shelf, so that way they don't slide around too much. There's this little plug which also acts as a divider, allowing you to put something like a cell phone right here on that side of this little cubby right there so it won't roll around. This is kind of a large Android cell phone that Toyota has provided with the car. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit there, but it does fit in this section right over here. We also have a little divider right there. This divider over here acts like a plug so you can pull it out and it allows you to run your USB cables or charging cables to the USB and charging ports right down there below in the dashboard. XLE and limited models get the standard 8-inch touchscreen infotainment and navigation system. Lower-end models get a slightly smaller touchscreen with essentially the same software minus the navigation. Below is where you'll find the tri-zone climate control in XLE and limited models. Base models get a dual-zone climate control system that's one zone up front and one zone in the rear. Again, there are USB charging connectors right under there. And then down here, you'll find things like your stability control program, hill descent assist, and a locking center coupling. Moving back, we get two large cup holders that easily accommodated large drinks. We have our heated seats in our XLE model. If we were in a limited model, we get slightly different switches right along here that both heated and cooled. And we have a very large center console. Interestingly enough, these are soft touch plastics on top, but it is actually a roller top. So like you'd find those you know, multi-divided desk roller tops, that's quite the same thing going on right there, only it has a soft touch plastic top. This is a very, very large center console with a removable divider. You can see it's quite deep in there, and we have a 12-volt power plug in there as well. It allows you to put supposedly 50-something juice boxes in there if you so desire, or large purses, we're told. XLE and limited models get a four-dial instrument cluster, very similar to the hybrid instrument cluster. Of course, the hybrid would replace the tachometer with the hybrid power meter. XLE limited and hybrid models all get this color multi-information display right here in the center. Lower-end models get a black and white display. Moving out, we can take a closer look at the steering wheel. Over here, we have our radio and phone buttons. And then over here, these buttons control that multi-information display. And cruise control is on a stock like you typically find with Toyota. Taking a look in the rear, we can see that that rear seat is in its most reclined position. It's a little bit difficult to see the detail right there. If we move over to this seat, it is in its most upright position. Second row passengers in XLE and Limited get standard rear sunshades there, which are very handy. You'll also find door plastics that don't depart from the front door plastics. That's fairly common in vehicles to get cheaper plastics as you go rearward, but we still have plenty of soft touch plastics here and then of course here on the door as well in the rear. The rear seat entertainment system is ceiling mounted and we have a Blu-ray disc player with a secure digital card slot as well as a fairly decently sized screen. We're out here on California's Highway 1 testing the 2014 Highlander because this is now one of the better handling vehicles in this mid-sized crossover segment, whereas the last Highlander was towards the bottom of the pack. That's due to a number of things. First off, we have skinnier rubber on those tires. 
And I don't mean width of the tires, I actually mean the aspect ratio. So there's less rubber going on on those wheels. That's thanks to those wheels growing this year. That means that we have less give in those tires, which adds to crisper feel out on the road. But we also have much stiffer springs than we had before. The Highlander in 2013 was a fairly soft crossover vehicle, and for 2014, this is now towards the upper end of the pack in terms of road feel as well as handling ability. And I know that sounds like a strange thing coming from Toyota, but trust me, you need to test drive one of these things and you'll instantly see the difference between this Highlander and the last generation of Highlander. Also adding to that is the new rear suspension design. The old suspension in the Highlander was honestly designed for packaging as well as cost. This generation of Highlander now has a much slimmer rear suspension. They've gone to a double wishbone suspension, which is typically found in luxury vehicles. But the reason for that is, again, packaging, because the rear seats are about three inches wider or so than before, even though the Highlander has only grown about half an inch in overall width. That's how they jammed the three people in that third row seat to give you the eight passenger seating. However, it pays dividends out on the road because the rear suspension is much, much better than the outgoing version. The outgoing version really felt uh, a little uneasy and quite unsure out on the road, especially on rough pavement. It was kind of unsettling because you had those soft springs and a rear suspension design that just never really felt totally settled out on winding mountain roads. It means that out on these roads we have an awful lot less tip and dive, an awful lot less body roll than we had before in the previous generation Highlander. And we have a Highlander that's actually fun to drive out on these mountain roads, whether you get the front wheel drive version or the all wheel drive version. Now I had a chance today to test the all-wheel drive V6, the front-wheel drive V6, and the front-wheel drive four-cylinder engine. Unfortunately, that four-cylinder engine is only available in the base model of Highlander, which I think is a shame because that's a very good engine, very well suited to the Highlander. Even though it only has 180-something horsepower, the performance is fairly good. This V6 all-wheel drive model slotted in just over 7 seconds to 60. It's right between 7 and 7.5. And we'll have that final number when we get one for a week, so be sure and stay tuned for that but the V6 is fairly reasonable for this segment. The four-cylinder honestly isn't that far behind. It felt like it was around eight to eight and a half seconds, which is acceptable for the mid-sized crossover segment. Fuel economy depends greatly on which engine you choose. That four-cylinder engine averaged about 26 miles per gallon for us. The V6 with all-wheel drive has been averaging about 16 or 17 miles per gallon, making it just about or slightly below average in this segment. The hybrid model scored 28 miles per gallon average in our test, which is right around what the EPA says you'll get, and it makes it the most fuel-efficient gasoline engine available in this mid-size three-row crossover segment. Only the Grand Cherokee exceeds that number, and it's a two-row, five-passenger SUV. It doesn't exceed it uh, too much, and it's only in the diesel version, and the diesel will cost you an awful lot more to operate than the gasoline electric Highlander will. At 70 to 71 decibels in my measurements, this 2014 model has made significant strides in terms of cabin quietness. However, it is still louder than something like a GMC Acadia, a Buick Enclave, or something like a Dodge Durango. It is, however, a little bit quieter than something like a Kia Sorento or one of those other entries towards the bottom of this three-row segment. 2014 repositions the Highlander as more of a driver's crossover than it ever has been in the past. While this isn't as fun as something like a Dodge Durango, which is rear-wheel drive, this is a great improvement over the last model. And if you're looking for something in this three-row crossover segment that has a little bit more excitement to it, then the Highlander is definitely a decent option, especially if you're looking for an eight-passenger crossover vehicle, because your real only options in this segment are this Pilot that's right in front of me, as well as a three-row crossover from General Motors. And those three-row GM crossovers are fairly heavy. That Buick Enclave is the cupcake shy of 5,000 pounds, meaning that this Highlander is a decent amount more nimble out on the road. With the revised suspension design in this Highlander, it's also an awful lot more stable and an awful lot more planted. Now, the four-cylinder engine is front-wheel drive only, and the base 3.5-liter V6 is front-wheel drive as well, so you do get a decent amount of torque steer and other front-wheel drive feel out on the road. Same thing goes on with the hybrid, actually, because the hybrid can only send about 75 horsepower to the rear, so you still get one-wheel peel as well as some torque steer in that model. Toyota has upped their technology game for 2014, making available certain driver assistance and safety features that they haven't offered in the past, like radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring, and lane departure warning. Compared to the competition, however, some of those features aren't quite as advanced. Like the radar cruise control system that's available in this Highlander only operates above 35 miles an hour. It's not a full speed range system, and it operates in a higher speed range than some of the other entries in this segment, which typically cut out around 15 or 20 miles an hour. You also won't find things like front parking sensors, all around view cameras, or self-parking systems in the Highlander, 
but it does mean that it's going to be easier to find the model that you want on the lot because there are fewer variations of the Highlander. Instead, Toyota makes it a lot easier to purchase one by packaging all those options into packages rather than having a million standalone options. If you're shopping for a mid-sized three-row crossover vehicle, then the Highlander definitely deserves a place at the top of your list, especially if you're looking for an eight-passenger crossover vehicle because this seriously tops GM's Landa platforms as well as the Honda Pilot. The Pilot's getting a little bit old, and the Highlander definitely drives better than any of those other options. Part of the problem with the Lambda triplets from General Motors is that they're quite heavy for an SUV. They're actually almost as heavy as the full-size body-on-frame SUVs from General Motors, and they're also very large. If you are shopping for that eight passenger crossover, then you need to ask yourself how comfortable you want those eight passengers to be because the third row in the Highlander just isn't as large as the full size Lambda crossovers or as large as something like a Ford Flex, which is very boxy and has an awful lot of rear headroom. However, this is just about as comfortable as the average crossover entry in this segment. The Dodge Durango is a little bit bigger back there, but the Kia and the Hyundai crossovers are a decent amount smaller than the Toyota Highlander. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and this has been our quick look at the 2014 Toyota Highlander crossover vehicle. Be sure and click that subscribe banner at the bottom of your screen so you can check back on all of our latest videos, including the forthcoming full review of the 2014 Toyota Highlander sometime in February when we can get our hands on one for a complete week. If you have any questions about the Highlander or about any vehicle in general, you can always pop them in the comment section down below, or you can also email me at alex at alexonautos.com.